Good afternoon. Uh, today's topic is remote sensing and GIS for coastal zone management. Uh, as you know that uh, first we should define what is a coastal zone. Coastal zone is the transitional area between land and the sea. It is a band rather than a line. That means if you digitize a coastal zone, it should it should come as a polygon in ArcGIS. But when we are talking about a line, we used to talk about the land and water boundary. So it's an area and the width of the area varies from place to place and is determined by the interaction of the marine and the terrestrial process. That means the coastal zone width is not fixed in all the places. It depends on how much strong is your marine process or how much strong is your terrestrial process. This coastal zone is occupying less than 18% of the Earth's land surface. That means coastal zone is very narrow. Only 40% of the 1 million kilometer coastline of the world is accessible. That means we can go there and temperate enough to be habitable. That means we can live there. But only 40% only of the 18% of the land surface is accessible. That means very small area where we can live. But yet it accommodates more than 60% of the world population. It implies that the pressure of the coastal resources is tremendously high and density of the population is also very high in the coastal zone. The coastal zone is occupying only 18% of the surface of the globe, but as we have already discussed that within this 18% of the surface of the globe, around 60% of the world population are living. But two thirds of the major cities in the world are lying in the coastal zone. In India, if you give example, except our capital Delhi, all the met major metros like Mumbai, uh, Chennai, Calcutta, they are lying in the coastal zone. As the area is very small, at the same time, the population is very high. So population density is in general six times higher than the non-coastal areas. Another most important component of coastal zone that 90% of the world fish catch are coming from the coastal waters. This is because the coastal water is highly productive when, when food is concerned because the chlorophyll concentration in the coastal water is very high because the coastal zone lots of rivers are coming from the land and they are mixing in the coastal waters and then they are bringing lot of sediments at the same time they are bringing lot of phytoplankton from the land part which are using by the fishes as their food. Coastal zone as I have already told you it is a part of the land and part of the ocean. So 8% of the ocean surface is lying in the coastal zone. 75 to 18% of the global sink of suspended river load are happening in the coastal area because lots of sediments are being brought by the rivers from the land and they are dumping the, all those sediments in the coastal water. That sediments may form a delta depending on the various kinds of geological and the oceanographic condition or it may form as a estuary without forming major deltas. As, as you know that the east coast of India you will find lots of major deltas but in the west coast there is no deltas only major estuaries are forming. There are other reasons for this whether delta will form or delta will not form. I am not going in detail of those things and 90% of the global sedimentary mineralization are happening in the coastal area. In geology there are three ways of forming a mineral. Like there is igneous process, there are sedimentary process or there may be metamorphic processes. But in the coastal area, 90% of the sedimentary mineralization are happening in the coastal zone. So coastal zone is very, very important. I show you some of the bullets, but it is not the exhaustive list. There are, uh, there are so many other points which can be considered that how coast is important. It is very important for the humanity. At the same time, it is a essential and fragile element of the global ecosystem. It is highly dynamic. Coastal zone is very dynamic, so it is very difficult to put boundaries because it is the, the coastal water, the boundary, boundary is not fixed. You know, that during high high water time, the water goes inside the land. During low water, the water goes toward the ocean. So boundary is all, all, always a, always a very very dynamic in nature. And in the coastal zone, there are it is subjected to multiple uses. Various people uses the coastal zone for their own use, own benefit. So if I if I show you in the next slide. The various kinds of activities in the coastal zone, you, you can find that uh, various activities like you can see the all the names like there are dredging activities happening, there are diving activities, erosion con control activities, somebody is dumping the waste, lot of pollution activities happening, naval activities or other military activities are happening, oil tankers movement, tourism activities, industry is coming up in the coastal zone. So n number of act activities are happening in the coastal zone. So coastal ecology is highly threatened. At the same time, it is also degrading very fast. So one of the major important of the remote sensing that how to make sustainable development of the coast because coast is very important when human civilization is concerned. 
and and it is also important because if you see they are from the very beginning of our civilization the civilization started at the coast all our ancient civilization like mohenjo-daro harappa lothar they actually basically you will find the evidences of the sea basically basically civilization started at the coast so from that time onwards the people started living in the coast with the resources are easily available easy transport because through ships you can send the material from one country to another country that is the cheapest way of sending the materials so from the very first time of civilization the people started living in the coast and if you see there are various kinds of activities if i summarize those activities there are intensive agriculture activities like aquaculture activities fishery activity lots of fruits and vegetables are being grown in the coast exploitation of the minerals from the coastal area there are oil exploration both offshore and the onshore there are sand mining salt salt uh, production in the coastal area and various other minerals like manganese nodules and other minerals are also uh, like uh, heavy minerals extraction uh, from kerala coast like ilmenite monazite those things are happening in the coastal area lots of industries coming up like uh, shipping industry shipping building shipping maintenance breaking they are all in the coastal area oil refineries fish and the main process, uh, processes um, infrastructure they are also in in the, in the coastal area tourism activity uh, good beaches are all around our coastal area like uh, goa coastal area Kerala coastal area, Andaman Nicobar, nice, beautiful beaches are there, and they are always attractive to the to, uh, tourists. Swimming activity, sailing. Nowadays, people are talking about the ecotourism activity. Lots of infrastructure are happening in the coastal area. New harbors are coming up for the uh, usefulness for our own national development. Pipelines, canals, road, good transport, navigation and the communication. Dikes are coming up. Reinforcement of the coast, the coast which are highly erosion prone. We, we used to put lot of uh, hard engineering structure in the coast like dikes breakwater groins they're coming up in the coastal area so lots of infrastructure activities happening lots of industries are coming up in the coast most important is the uh, like various kinds of border activities defense navy like we have a um, international border along the silongan coast with bangladesh coast so those areas are very very important uh, to maintain our national sovereignty so lots of activities naval defense Mm, Indian Coast Guard activity that are happening in the coastal area. Also, the, they do have certain kind of impact in the coastal zone. So, if we try to highlight the coastal zone, you see that it is a high population density area and high degree of urbanization is happening all around our Indian coast. It's a fragile and the complex ecosystem and complex habitat. It's a high density of economic activities and infrastructure is happening in the coastal area. Various kinds of activities. That, so there are conflict of activities. There are competition for the resources, both land, marine, and the water. Definitely, if the population density is very high, so many activities. That means there is over exploitation of the natural resources in the coastal area. And also, as we told that it's, this ecology is very fragile. If you disturb one component of the coastal uh, resources, coastal ecology, other component is going to be affected. If I give you an example, like if you cut the mangroves uh, in the coastal area, or if you de destroy the coral reefs. Invariably, these, these activity is going to affect the other component of the coastal ecosystem. Pollution of the environment. Coastal area is becoming highly polluted because dumping of the waste, dumping of the waste from the from the uh, nuclear power plant, from the other kind of industry, th thermal industries, the water is getting polluted. Degradation and it causes basically degradation of the natural environment. Finally, it is happening loss of biodiversity and natural ha habitat. Various places that there are, uh, we have seen that up late, there are increase of the coastal erosion. There may be various kinds of reason. There may be natural reason. There may be anthropogenic reasons, global sea level rise, um, and also uh, it is it is happening because of the uh, like uh, cutting of the mangroves, uh, because of the sand mining from the coastal area. They all aggravated the erosion in the coast. So we are losing land particularly, and also the coastal area we are trying to develop, and because of the development. Uh, there are uh, uh, certain kind of uh, offshoot which, has, uh, which have been seen that rise in the social inequality and the poverty. The local people, they are not getting benefited. Like if you are uh, setting up a five-star hotel in a, in a coastal area, definitely uh, the local people, they're supposed to get some job or something, but it is not happening in all parts of the Indian coast. So we have to see how you can minimize the social inequality and the poverty. Because all the earlier local fishermen, they nowadays, they don't do fishing. They like to have some job in the uh, towns and cities. So they are leaving the coastal area because there are no source of income nowadays. Because also, uh, uh, because of the pollution of the activity, number of getting fishes is also in from the coastal water, it is diminishing. Unless until you have a like uh, 
uh, high end motorized board you have gps you follow the pfz map and all other things so, so people are living so social inequality is increasing in the coastal area so taking into all into picture the, now uh, uh, we are thinking to how to manage the coastal zone so we talk about the coastal zone management which is the topic of today's lecture so it is basically the involves the planning and organization of the development processes so as we told that lots of uh, development processes are happening in the coast and some activities we cannot say no you don't do this activities because th these activities are important for the national development like you want to set up a harbor you want to do some certain naval activities or you want to make like a chandipur on sea some missile test testing center so they are required they are required for the defense purpose they are required for the national development or you have to lay some pipeline gas transport uh, you cannot say no but what you can do you have to control those activities in the coastal area in such a way so you can do the sustainable use of the natural resources that means what are the resources are there in the coastal zone you can make sustainable use so the resources should not be uh, destroyed totally so you should keep the resources for your next generation so that they can use so that is the basic backbone concept of the coastal zone management the managing the coastal zone in a sustainable manner for this what we, we have to do we have to require a lot of information for the uh, managing coastal zone and the information will be will be very diverse because so many disciplines are involved in the coastal area that we will see uh, what are the various kinds of disciplines so when we talk about the coastal zone management information system it has to be an open system because there will be no no closed system which will be used for all kinds of coasts because coasts are highly diverse in different areas are totally different so it has to be a open kind of system which can incorporate various kinds of data and they can be extended to different um, levels of details so that is very very important part that it, it has to be an open kind of system as i was telling you that uh, various kinds of disciplines or coastal zone management activities are involved that's why we tell basically there is no coastal zone manager as such because coastal zone management is the responsibility of the different government organization coastal zone management involves several disciplines and nobody can master of all those disciplines un unless and until you take the advert uh, help from the expertise of that respective discipline like there are strong role of in the coastal zone management from hydrologist soil and water conservation environmental expertise forester agroeconomist physical planners nowadays uh, like uh, as we told that uh, because of the social inequality is increasing we have to take help from the sociologist or anthropologist and also economists so everybody has a role at the same time there is a role of the geologist geomorphologist so they have a lot of role to play within the coastal zone management purposes so it is a various disciplines who has to come together they have to sit together they have to come up to, with, a, with a proper plan and then only coastal zone management uh, uh, activities is, will be successful and it is possible when you talk about the indian coastline if you see uh, this is the irs one c whips data uh, 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 and uh, we have a uh, long coastline of around 7500 km long which can be divided into east coast west coast andaman nicobar and lakshadweep island along with some marine and coastal protected areas east coast is mainly characterized by large fan separated deltas we have a good amount of mangroves in the sundarban bitarkonika pichavaram we have a saline lakes like chilka pulikat in the east coast and also we have gulf of mannar near the uh, sri lanka West coast is characterized mainly by the very narrow coastal strip. We have a good estuaries like Narmada, Mahi, Sabarmati, uh, creeks, backwaters, uh, in Kerala's sandy beaches. We have a gulfs in Gulf of Kutch and Khambad in Gujarat. We have a um, uh, estuaries. Several ports are there in the in the western coast. We have a limited coral reefs and uh, and also a good amount of mangroves. Andaman Nicobar is characterized by the dense forest. Uh, mangroves meandering saline creeks and also corals in some uh, good amount of corals in various places of andaman nicobar lakshadweep islands are mainly coral island mainly the um, uh, atolls and uh, as i told there are 14 uh, marine and the coastal protected protected area so this is what uh, our coastline but what are the, what are the issues of coastal zone management basically unless until we we know the issues we cannot uh, solve the problems so major issue in the coastal zone is the population pressure uh, because we are the second largest populous country in the world so um, population pressure is tremendously high in the coastal area if we uh, if we can control the population pressure definitely there are lots of uh, the problem will be automatically be solved 
but uh, population pressure is very high uh, and that is why the exploitation of the resources is also very high there is a degradation of the mangroves in the coral reef ecosystem there are various reasons for it but degradation is happening and it has been seen using multi temporal satellite data at the various places of indian coastline there is a issue with the municipal sewage and the waste water disposal uh, various places in the west uh, in the coastal area it has been seen that uh, the water is getting degraded because of the industrial effluent solid waste disposal municipal sewage also agricultural waste they are coming in the, they are uh, uh, they are mixing in the coastal waters various kinds of natural disasters so in here we cannot control the natural disasters they will happen only we have to prepare ourselves so that uh, the disaster cause can be minimized and uh, there will be less effect in the particularly on the when human pressures human life is concerned like uh, there are disasters like there are cyclones there are storm surge tsunamis sea level rise so there are various kinds of disasters which are happening in the coastal area this is the impact of the aquaculture uh, this is one kind of artificial fishing um, nowadays people are converting the mud flats into into aquaculture and because of the aquaculture the groundwater quality is getting degraded so uh, it has also a lot of impact in the coastal area but at the same time we are a lot of uh, foreign exchange out of this aquaculture activity coastal erosion um, it has been seen in the various places of coastal erosion has been aggravating because of the various activities of the both from the uh, natural effect and because of the anthropogenic effect like some area you are putting a port or harbor some for this you need to put do some protective structure so some part of the coast you are protecting you are saving that land part but somewhere it is aggravating the erosion so you are losing land in some part that is what i am talking about the impact of the port coastal mining is another area where, where we need to give lot of importance nowadays Uh, coastal construction are coming up to protect some part so you can protect your area but you cannot protect your neighbor's land in case of sea water various parts of the coast like uh, the gujarat area the southern part of indian coast there are lot of uh, uplet it has been seen that sea water uh, has been uh, has been going deep inside the uh, land and because of the potable drinking water quality is degraded impact of power plant and definitely there are certain impact uh, of the tourism activity so tourist come and they do lot of littering and other things in the coastal area so coastal water quality in the coastal zone overall there are total degradation is happening in the, in the, in, the, in the coastal zone so we need to do certain activities in the coast particularly they are very important so for any kind of coastal zone management activity first we need to collect data regarding that particular coastal area like collecting data concerning the coastal zone and also that because as i told coastal zone is very dynamic it is not that like a, like geological data which changes very slow so we can talk about any geological map or geology map that doesn't change very fast you can take the data of 10 years 15 years 20 years back data but in case of coastal zone the data should be highly reliable and data should be up to date so you have to rank the data reliability depending on their scale source age and the material and you have to maintain those information keep it up to date all kinds of latest data is important for the coastal zone because it is very dynamic it changes very fast like bathymetry map or suspended sediment concentration map you need to use those which are which are up to date at least the latest map at least some few days or few months before data you should use when you talk about the coastal zone management activities because it changes very fast and also you need to do monitoring of the inventory studies lots of uh, inventory has always been done in the coastal water when coral reef when goes as uh, concerned so you need to monitor those inventory studies for, with the remote sensing data you need to generate various kinds of thematic map as i am maintaining like coastal geomorphology map coastal lineaments map uh, coral reef map other coastal resources map you can generate using remote sensing data and definitely you should support the, the management of the planning activities by providing them the necessary and sufficient information on the coastal zone that only being expert in the remote sense. you can you can provide those activities to the planners or the decision makers who can take decision on the coastal zone so you are the best person being a scientist uh, to provide all those information and also definitely you should support the writing policies concerning the coastal zone so all those activities any activities you, if you are uh, being a part so you are doing some coastal zone management activities and i will show you certain images which you can see like uh, this is the degradation of the of the mangroves uh, and uh, aquaculture is coming up uh, this is the image in the kakinara coast this is a karinga mangroves the red color this is standard fcc and you can you see the square square area they are the aquaculture plant and you can see the all the this aquaculture has come up in the mangrove patches so mangrove has been cut and aquaculture practice 
uh, is there so but this is the totally against the management practices of the coastal zone and anyhow you cannot cut the mangroves because they are coming under the crz1 and at the same time you can see this is the overall the uh, the karinga mangrove the red color and you can see here the all the aquaculture plantation is coming up in the coastal area this is a kakinara harbor this is a kakinara speech this is a ship breaking yard in in the in the alang this is a pan image um, 5.8 meter resolution in, in pan computing mode and you can see the small small they are the ship they have come here to break basically they have, the local people they will uh, break the ships and the raw materials will be used for some other purpose they will sell it but at the same time because of this breaking activities all the coastal waters quality along the alang is highly degraded because they use oxyacetylene and so many other uh, devices which uh, when also the all the cutting materials from the heavy iron uh, so they are degrading the entire water uh, along this part now when you talk about the little bit of the uh, coastal zone management uh, remote sensing component uh, when you talk about the bathymetry it has been seen that um, uh, red light attenuates rapidly in the in the water doesn't penetrate deeper than 5 meters like uh, red light doesn't have much penetration capability blue light penetrates up to 15 meter in clear water even up to 30 meter it can penetrate uh, green light penetrates as far as 15 meter uh, in clear water around the coral reef because wherever there are the coral reefs the water is uh, very clear so uh, it can penetrate as far as 15 meter around the coral reef green light NIR doesn't penetrate uh, much, it has a maximum penetration capability is 0.5 meter and the IR is basically fully absorbed. So, uh, IR band and the NR band very important to find out the land and water boundary because you see, you see the IR is fully absorbed. That, that means in the water part, the pixel values will be almost zero. At the land part, there will be certain pixel values it will be there because they will be reflected the uh, IR region. So, you will get a very clear cut boundary on the land and water and that land and water boundary is very very important for various kinds of application so in air band even also in air band is useful to understand the various kinds of water bodies somewhere if somebody wants to do wants to pick up the water bodies they can just load the in air band it automatically the water bodies will be very sharply delineated so this is very important so when bathymetry is concerned you can find out which band is most suitable depending on the area you can find out bathymetry from the optical sensor. Nowadays, people are using active microwave data to understand the bathymetry. So, uh, there are certain kinds of uh, uh, parameters uh, where remote sensing has a role to play with for coastal zone studies. You can see that uh, there are three columns. One is the uh, parameters, remote sensing compliances, and wh where the present status. Like mangrove, coral reef, salt pans, uh, aquaculture, wetland, those kinds of mapping and the monitoring in the different scale is possible and they are operational using various kinds of remote sensing data of different resolution. In the fishery activity, their forecasting and monitoring is possible uh, and also uh, they are mainly semi-operational with no aviature data which gives you the SST and IRSP4 ocean set data, IRSP4 P6, they are mainly for the chlorophyll estimation, ocean color monitor sensor. And also you can uh, you can do the study uh, coastal geomorphology and the soil line changes mapping and monitoring in the different scales and they are operational using high resolution satellite data you can do study from uh, sea surface temperature wind where water vapor content they are also operational using irsp4 and other foreign satellite they are very useful for the fishery forecasting monsoon studies and the other ocean and atmospheric studies you can find out areas of the upwelling gyres eddies because they are important for when you talk about the potential fishing zone they are important for the ocean dynamic studies. They, can, they are also operational using the IRSP4 and other sensor. You can map the coastal regulation zone, CRZ, in different scale. They are also operational using uh, uh, IRS1C and the 1D data. You can, uh, you can find out the sea surface um, uh, SSC, suspended sediment concentration, using uh, IRSP4 data. Uh, you can do the study oil slick, one kind of pollution. Uh, you can uh, you can study the oil slick mainly with the active remote sensing sensor data, but it, it started with the optical data. But nowadays, uh, the active remote sensing sensor like uh, ERS data, or the um, JRS data, Canadian radar set data, so they are very important to give you our Indian RI set uh, data. So they are important to understand the oil slick, uh, the difference from the oil slick look like features, 
and also using some model we can find out the how the movement of oil slick will take place chlorophyll chlorophyll uh, it is semi operational any of using uh, ocean set uh, sensor and also you can study ocean current um, and the uh, circulation using various foreign satellite uh, and other satellite and when coastal thematic information extraction is concerned basically you need to understand that what kind of uh, satellite data you will select and basically when coastal zone is concerned their information extraction is concerned basically we do select the low tide data because only that time the uh, good exposure of mud flood is possible so you can extract the mud flood information H high tide time the mud floods will be under the water you cannot get any information and most importantly the selection of scale uh, your project uh, is of which scale depending on the scale you will find out what the resolution data you need like if you want to generate a project uh, scale your output is 1 into 10000 but if you feel that i will be using ocm data of 360 meter or no no aher 1.1 km you cannot do that or like 1 is to 5000 10000 you need a high resolution data at least 5 meter 6 meter data is required then only you can do and also classification accuracy you should understand for the coastal thematic information we are looking for some uh, somewhere in 85 to 90% confidence level and also the, the your classification accuracy is very very important and also uh, it can be applicable to extensive areas what accuracy you are taking out the classification scheme and it should be suitable to use the different remote sensing data obtained in the different times of the year because multi temporal uh, classification of the satellite data can tell you uh, which class has converted to what class and whether the mangroves have uh, afforestation is taking place or deforestation is taking place whether the coral reefs has degraded or not they can all come out of the different classification uh, when you do classify the multi temporal satellite data so these are very important uh, um, uh, for the classification system so you should understand that what are your confidence level and uh, uh, for this what kind of training site you need to select you should do, do go to the field work take the training site and find out the uh, accuracy then you can use those map as a uh, for the coastal zone management purpose when coastal zone management is one of the component important component is the coastal hazards basically you can talk about mainly two types of hazard one is the short term they just come and go Uh, like uh, cyclone hurricane typhoon tsunamis flash flood from the river and there is a long term uh, hazards like land subsidence in the coastal area sea level rise coastal erosion there are one kind of chronic disaster we call we call them cyclone is basically an uh, uh, it's a atmospheric closed circulation rotating counter clockwise in the northern hemisphere and clock, uh, clockwise in the southern hemisphere storm surge is associated with the cyclone it's an abnormal rise in sea level accompanying a cyclone on other in intense storm and this is basically height is the difference between the observed level of the sea surface and the level that would have been occurred in the absence of a, uh, of a cyclone and storm tide is a term basically it is actual level of sea water resulting from the astronomic tide combined with the storm tide hurricane and cyclone basically depending on the where it, it is happening happening typhoons and hurricane are tropical revolving storm they are called cyclone when they occur in the indian ocean and they are the mainly pacific and adelting ocean terms is as i already we, we have told that it is a low pressure system or deep pressure around which the air circulates in anti clockwise in the northern hemisphere but clockwise in the southern hemisphere basically here the speed of the circulating air may exceed even 33 meters per second near the earth surface whenever there is a tropical cyclone happening in the coastal area there is a strong wind associated with the cyclone there will be storm surge or local sea level rise and there will be associated with the heavy rain and so strong wind and the and and, and the uh, uh, strong wind will cause the damage to the structure and also it will call destruction of the crops storm surge and the sea level rise along with heavy rain will cause flooding flooding will cause the damage to the structures and also flooding and damage to structure will cause loss, loss of life so one single disaster you can see it can cause damage to structures flooding loss of life destruction of crop so many things so that was the that's why the, the cyclone is very very important and this is a, some insert image showing the cyclone movement because it's a uh, i can i cannot show you the video basically it was a uh, video where it can you can able to produce that how the cyclone is moving and finally la landfall is happening near the odisha coast this is a super cyclone um, in the odisha coast uh, during the year 1999 and it was a highly devastating uh, cyclone this is a map of the coastal regulation zone this is basically uh, panaji area where you can see the uh, the from the high water line this is the high water line 
because this is the low water and the high water and from the high water line 500 meter buffer has been created towards the land which is the we call the coastal regulation zone boundary and coastal regulation zone has been classified in four ways crz one two three and four so once the boundary is prepared then you can you can uh, classify the the uh, coastal elements over here you can find out if there is a mangrove there is a sandy beaches they will come under the crz one they are the basically no development zone or highly sensitive areas then there are the CRJ 2, 3 and the 4 like Andaman Nicobar and, and the other islands. When we talk about the GIS, particularly GIS, mostly coastal data, the information is special. So GIS is very, very important in the coastal geo management purpose because it needs integration and analysis of larger and the research, uh, re, various richer databases. Using GIS, we can model and simulate the coastal processes. You can generate the various kinds of scenario if it happens like this, then what will be the scenario in the coastal area? If the oil pollution is coming in this part, then what will be the effect on the coastal resources? Those kinds of scenario testing you can do. GIS is very, very important to support the decision makers, particularly including rapid response to a disasters. And also uh, um, there is a communication and sharing of ideas with other, other cross-cutting departments. You can find out it works like this, uh, different layers, bathymetry layer, they may be vector layer or they may look uh, or raster layer, the ocean current, the ocean color images, the um, uh, the point information, various kinds of like from a particular point or uh, uh, point measurement from the sea or Argos, like there's a coordinate station measurement, faces mapping, sedimentary surface mapping, and we can put together in a GIS and get our desired output. So GIS is very, very important. It has lots of benefit uh, as we have uh, discussing. But there are many various challenges in the coastal area, particularly GIS. GIS basically, a coastal area working with the three spatial dimensions is very, very uh, difficult because in coastal area, the third dimension is always changing. When you go deeper in the ocean, so many parameters are changing uh, with increasing of the depth. So it's very, very tough. Working with the temporal data and dynamic process, it's always, that means T component is always uh, has to be included when GIS is there because the coastal zone is very, very dynamic and always we work with the temporal data with time, the various parameters are changing. There's a great difference in the spatial and the temporal scale. As we have discussed, the coastal boundaries are fuzzy and very difficult to defining objects. And definitely there are not very good coastal data model to represent in a GIS. So coastal GIS is not a very mature technology. There is no commercial GIS software is available so far which is mainly based for the coastal application. Like what are the other GIS are mainly the ARC GIS and other things, they are basically for the land application. But we are still using for the coastal GIS because there is no as such for coastal application because there is no as such the coastal GIS dedicated for the coastal application. But support from the commercial sector is slow, but it's a growing. And coastal managers and the scientists are not in a major lobbying group in the GIS industry. GIS is basically based on the various kinds of land application, geological application, geophysical application, and other application in the, in the land part. And now GIS is used in the criminal, in the police, everywhere. But not as such very typical uh, coastal GIS is there. And also in the coastal area, another very important is the cost issues, the data particularly, data cost, the sensitivity, all the coastal area is highly sensitive. Even you cannot get a suburban topocity of the coastal area because of the sensitiveness. You cannot digitize the contour map in the coastal area, make a DEM, and also time series data. So you need to hold a huge, a huge data set to handle them if you want to address the, uh, the coastal area. And if the data are available, are they in a suitable form? So you have to put data in a suitable form uh, in the coastal area. Now, I, if time permits, I'll show you some selected application of the coastal area, what we have done uh, in our department in Indian National Remote Sensing. See, there are the certain study we did using erosion accuracy along the Kakinera coast. Some part of the Kakinera speed is aggrading, some part is uh, degrading. So this type of study is possible using multi-temporal satellite data. Same same thing like soil line changes in the part of the coastal area, uh, Gujarat coast. Uh, this is a soil line red color. You can see it is 2003. And the backdrop is the soul line of 1970, which you got from the digitizing the survey window topology. When I superimpose one over the other using very precise geometric corrections, then I can find out how the soul line is behaving, how soul line is changing with time. So which part of the soul line is eroding, which part of the soul line is degrading. So uh, accordingly, suitable measure can be taken up. So we can do this type of study. This is the one study we did uh, for salt water intrusion around the Gulf of Khambat. 
uh, this white color patch is the uh, salt affected mud flat gujarat is the state which produce maximum salt in our country but of late it has been seen the the water quality in the coastal villages has been degraded because of the saline water ingress and you can see all those villages near the coast like along kalatala bhoga bundola so all those villages the uh, the potable water quality is very bad as for the standard of the world health organization your chlorine content in the water should be less than 250 mg per liter but unfortunately if you see the contours we collected water samples in the area and get them analyzed in the bhavnagar university and uh, make the contours of the various chlorine content uh, content see 250 mg 500 750 1000 mg per liter and you can see that green color contour is a sep contour it's a 250 mg mg per liter so all the all those villages which are coming under the violet red and the yellow color where the chlorine content in the water is more than 250 mg per liter so all those villages they are drinking the people are drinking the water having chlorine content content is very high and this is happening mainly because of the saline uh, water ingress so we did some uh, modeling study in the area to understand how salinity increase is taking place what are the uh, measures we can take for this so we collected various uh, parameter like total depth static water level total diesel solid tds carbonate bicarbonate chloride uh, around the bhavnagar district from the various uh, well location data you can see the position of the wells and this data has been collected from the gujarat water resource development corporation gandhinagar uh, for the year 1983 to 2003 in every five year interval in pre monsoon and the post monsoon period because the, when salt water intrusion is concerned when there is a heavy shower lot of fresh water goes inside the land so if you want to understand this type of study you need to do it both pre monsoon and the post monsoon because scenario is changing after the post monsoon if you see the next slide you can see that this is a bhalla uh, ranking around the bhavnagar coast in may 2003 this is the pre monsoon period you can see the red color is highly vulnerable this is the moderately vulnerable, the less vulnerable, this is the non vulnerable area, the green color. This is a pre monsoon scenario. But after the post monsoon, October 2003, you can see that um, non vulnerable area has increased. Also, the highly vulnerable area is, has been restricted to limited pockets. The moderately vulnerable area has increased, and also less vulnerable area is increased. So, since scenario is changing, it is, a, it is a basically a model, model work which is called a Galdit model. We use the model and try to find out which area is more vulnerable for the uh, saline water ingress, mainly using various kinds of surface, subsurface geological parameters. Uh, if I tell you like uh, aquifer uh, thickness, distance of the aquifer from the uh, soil line, the height of the sea level, uh, aquifer hydraulic conductivity. So these are the various parameters we consider. Then those data we got from the from the various kinds of well locations in the area. So you can also do this type of work to understand the vulnerability scenario in the region. And also you can find out using GIS again, what are the villages which are affected by, uh, by uh, chlorinity content more than 250 mg per liter. You can see in the pre-monsoon, this is all black dotted. So they are the all villages who are, uh, who are drinking um, groundwater having uh, chlorinity content more than 250 mg per liter. But uh, when there's a, uh, this is the post-monsoon scenario, this uh, left hand side and the right hand side is the pre-monsoon. So number of villages are more in the post pre-monsoon region number of villages are less in the post monsoon so this is what scenario uh, where the water chlorinity content is more than 250 mg per liter so you can do this type of study also we did some study to understand the storm surge risks uh, along the Odisha coast uh, particularly if there is a storm surge of uh, 1 meter or 0.5 meter what are the likely probable areas which will be inundated so high risk zone moderate risk zone this is basically mainly using uh, using digital high resolution digital elevation model data and also certain kind of geomorphological elements are important and we try to find out the cyclone shelter like if there is a cyclone what are the suitable areas where the chances of uh, getting inundation is less so we, this is the vulnerability index you can see so uh, so these are the most uh, vulnerable area uh, less vulnerable area at this violet color near the very coast area paradip region so they are the highly vulnerable region so accordingly also uh, uh, you can do uh, study so this is the sites for the we can we can find out what are the areas where people should move and uh, do the um, take the place uh, during cyclone time this is a study which is now one of the success story of remote sensing application for society is a potential fishing zone 
application nowadays uh, the fisherman goes with a trawler taking the pfz map and the gps and then now uh, they know where they should go where they try to catch fish so earlier when the chlorophyll map was not there we try to understand the potential fishing zone from the no wager data mainly trying to find out the thermal ponds basically these are areas where from the bottom the warm water is coming up with lot of chlorophyll and mixing with the upper uh, uh, bottom cold water is coming with the upper warm water so these are the, are the called fonts and they are the places where chances of getting fishes are more because here the from the bottom the lots of chlorophyll mixing cold water is coming and mixing with the upper warm water so this type of areas can be picked up by noa wager data and those areas we will be we earlier we used to use as the potential zone for the fishing but nowadays after when we started getting the chlorophyll content with chlorophyll information we are trying to put chlorophyll over the over the sst and we are trying to get the more better information about the pfz so you can find out this is a noa wager sst in the around the bay of bengal coast somewhere you can see the concentric ring which is basically ad this is there the places of chances of the uh, fish are more now this is a, a noa wager data 23rd april so the same date we try to get the um, uh, chlorophyll concentration from the irsp for ocm 23rd april 2001 so this is the chlorophyll map as i told you the coastal water having more chlorophyll when you go higher from the coast chlorophyll concentration will be decreased so this is the chlorophyll map when i am trying to put chlorophyll over the sst so i am getting a potential fishing zone map of 23rd april 2001 you can see this map is perfectly matching with the ad which i got from the only the noa wager data that means earlier also if you get a this type of ad is there the potential zone for the fishing zone where we used to do so i can find out the map like a high pfz area modern pfz area like this and also we did some study uh, during tsunami like for the post uh, post tsunami and the pre tsunami images and to try to find out the how the multi temporal satellite data are useful to understand the what are the areas where maximum devastation has taken place you can see this is the image of the marina beach this is the pre tsunami image and after the post tsunami you see the all the uh, white color of the beaches they are under the water now the new creeks has formed in the marina beach so those type of things you can find out uh, from the satellite data and this is a um, uh, tsunami inundation map around nagapattanam of tamil nadu uh, developed by the uh, icmem uh, now national center for coastal research uh, so they had, they tried to understand that what are the areas how much water has gone because of tsunami inundation and what are the various taluks uh, they um, uh, they were under the, under depressed you can see the inundation map also uh, depending on the uh, they are not straight so few places the inundation is happening far in the land few places it less because it depends on the earthquake parameter near shore bathymetry beach profiling land topography velocity of tsunami waves and the frequency they are all different in different places due to this parametric variation the inundation varied from one location to other so if there is a river so along the river the water goes far deep inside the land so like this so and also we, we find out the this is the all inundated area the hatch line and once this type of map can be generated it can given to the district administrator or districts uh, collectors so they can take the further remedial steps thank you very much for your kind attention